What? Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another episode of Complex Numbers But Different. And this time it's going to get really wild, in my opinion. This is going to be one of the biggest results in complex analysis, okay? Uh, or complex numbers in general. And, and we are going to dive right in. Last time I actually derived powers of i, okay? And they are really important for what we are going to do today. We are going to take a look at matrix exponentials. Okay, Papa, the exponential function of a matrix, e to the matrix power. This is so weird, but we are going to do it today. And for this, I would like to simply take a look at e to the b times i. Meaning overall, this is going to be e to the zero, negative b, b and zero. Now, how would you go on with something like this? this really doesn't make any sense at first glance, okay? But we're going to take a look at the serious expansion for our exponential function. It's going to be a really powerful tool. If we were to expand this thing right here, we would end up with a sum of k being greater or equal to zero, it's an infinity boy, okay? Of b times i to the kth power, so b to the kth power times i to the kth power over k factorial. And this next part, is going to be a bit more abstract, okay? You could drag everything out, etc., write everything out just like I did with Euler's formula back then. But we are going to create ourselves an indexing set and then we are going to argue a bit. So with indexing set, I mean our index k is going to run over a certain set. Here it's going to run over all the positive integers. We are going to construct ourselves something different. So i with an index of, let's say, um, s plus p times n, okay? And this in indexing set looks the following. It's just a set of all s plus p n, where n is element of the natural numbers with zero. Okay, I hope it does make sense. If we were to let partial sums run over partial indexing sets, then we would basically end up with our whole series yet again, if we were to bring everything together. It's going to make sense in a second, okay? I'm, I'm doing this on purpose because I don't want to write too much stuff out. We are going to assume that everything converges. We are going to assume that our exponential function converges under this real operator, this two by two matrix. If it does converge uniformly and absolutely, we can actually drag it out. We can break the sum up into partial sums, basically. Our first sum is going to run over the indexing set, k being element of all the natural numbers basically of the form 4 times n. Let that sink in. We are going to set s being equal to 0 and we are going to have 4 as our p times n. Okay, I hope this does make sense. Meaning we are going to cover up all the identity matrices with this argument and here I'm not going to write it out. I'm just going to write the summations out. Then our next one is going to be k being element of all of those k's of this form 4n plus 1, so indexing set, uh, 4n four, four plus 2, I'm terribly sorry. Meaning we are going to cover all the negative identity matrices up. We are going to move on, okay? We are going to let our next sum run over all the i's basically. k being element of i and then 4n plus 1. And now for the last summation, k being element of, yeah, we, we won't let it run over all the negative i's, okay? k being element of all the indexes, indices of 4n minus 1. I hope all of this makes made sense to you, okay? It, it was just some playing around and this just makes it simpler um, to actually argue a bit. Meaning what we have right here is, if we were to bring some stuff in, b to the kth power is going to be preserved. Also, k factorial is going to be preserved. What we also have is i to the 4nth power. i to the 4nth power is always the identity matrix, okay? I hope you can see where this came from. Next up, b to the kth power over k factorial is going to be preserved. Now, i, if we have i to the 4n plus 2 power, we are always going to end up with negative the identity matrix negative the identity matrix. Now it does make sense, right? Now this, this is a really cool way of writing out infinite sums in my opinion. 
Now next up, k being element of i to the uh, of i 4n plus 1. b to the k is going to be preserved over k factorial. And if we have i to the 4n plus 1 power, we are going to end up with simply the imaginary unit all the time. Okay, it's not dependent on k anymore. This is a really cool thing, okay? That's why I'm splitting stuff up. And now for the last one, this is the last case, we are going to have negative i. I hope you can see the pattern by now. Now, if we were to bring all of this together, we have a part with the identity matrix in it. Also, those two sums, if we were to bring those together, are going to cover up 0, negative 2, 4, negative 6, 8, negative 10, etc. Meaning overall, this is going to leave us with an alternating series where k is greater or equal to 0 of all the, well, even integers basically, even positive integers. So b to the 2k power over 2k factorial. Kind of the same spiel here, we have i as a common factor, meaning we are going to have 1, negative 3, 5, negative 7, etc. It's once again going to be an alternating series over all the positive odd integers, okay? So negative 1 to the k power, b to the 2k plus 1 power, over 2k plus 1 factorial. And here it goes. This is the best part. This thing right here, take a look into the description, is the series expansion for the cosine of b. This thing is the series expansion for the sine of b. Meaning overall, we are going to end up with e to the i times b being thus equal to our boy, the identity matrix times the cosine of b plus our imaginary unit i times the sine of b. Now, addition on matrices is defined point-wise. This right here is just a complex number. We have a real part and an imaginary part. Meaning overall, this right here is going to result in the matrix cosine of b, negative sine of b, sine of b, cosine of b. And this right here is one of the most important results. And it's going to make so much sense when you speak about complex numbers in a geometric way, talking about the geometric intuition behind complex numbers, which we are going to do in the next episode. Now, we have raised our exponential function to the i times b power, okay? to some imaginary power. And thus, we ended up with this matrix. But this matrix is something that I have derived before in the last advent calendar, okay? This thing right here is actually simply our rotation matrix where we rotate stuff, b decrease. This is so weird, right? Our rotation matrix that you use often, that you, for example, use in a yes, in an SU2, for example. This is going to form a group, if I remember correctly. Something Lie algebra stuff, okay? It's actually a matrix exponential. This is so weird, okay? We, we just in some simple indexing, we assumed that stuff converges, and thus we ended up with the rotation matrix. This is so weird. In the next episode, we are going to talk about the geometric interpretation of complex numbers and what complex numbers actually are. This right here were matrix exponentials. This is so nice, okay? This is something really cool. Also, one side note, if you were to have e to the identity matrix times a plus i times b, our imaginary numbers actually commute. And I made a proof on e to the a plus b being equal to e to the a times e to the b. But this only holds if our a and b's actually commute, okay? This is something that needs to hold that they commute under multiplication. And this is something that we actually have for complex numbers, meaning if we were to break this up, we would end up with e to the a 0, 0 a times our rotation matrix. I'm going to put it like this, okay? This is just something that you have right here, just if you are wondering how to break this up. And this is not true in general, so a lot of times in function analysis, you are actually going to have operators which are not going to commute under multiplication. And this right here doesn't always work, okay? It's not something that you should take for granted just because it does for real numbers. Doesn't mean that it holds for real or complex operators, okay? But this is it.
Before ending the video, I would like to thank Preint.org for sponsoring yet another video. I can't emphasize enough how much this actually means to me. They are such a huge website and they decided to sponsor a small channel like mine for such a long amount of time. And at this point, I really love using their product on a daily basis. It's just so much fun. They have daily exercises there or well-established exercises from one year ago. It really doesn't quite matter if you want to learn about linear algebra, algebra, quantum mechanics, numerical analysis, they, they really have you covered. And if you are an active learner like me and you just love to wake up and do exercises and think about, well, what is going to happen if you plug a, plug a matrix into the exponential function? What? You are going to end up with a rotation matrix? What? Then that's a perfect place for you, okay? Active learning is a part of mathematics and physics and all scientists in general. And it's also a matter of trial and, and error. So you get yourself a premium subscription and even if you don't want that, you can use the link at the top of the description to get 20% off an annual subscription or just free access to brain.org to try it out for yourself. And then you can get your hands on all the exercises there ranging from all topics you could think of in mathematics, physics, etc. And then you are going to do exercises. It's a matter of try and error. Maybe you mess it up, maybe you mess it up three times and even you, if you mess it up, you're going to get provided with the appropriate solutions by the community or brilliant.org in general. So this is basically their strongest point, I think. So you can get yourself nice solutions to everything and you can do as much exercises as you wish. And it's also a nice preparation for university, etc. It's, it's just a really nice place to learn actively. So if you really want to try it out, use the link at the top of the description. First 200 people to actually use the link. Get 20% off an annual subscription or you can just simply get free access to print.org and try it out for yourself. So if you really feel like supporting the channel, try out Brilliant, support the channel this way. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, recommend channel if you like, and if you want to support the channel a bit more, you know what you can do. And until the next video, have a flamble day. Ciao. We are spending our weekend at a Pox Horse Sea. It's quite nice here. Yeah. Right there should be a fountain, but it's turned off right now.